Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be diving into the week ahead, starting September 2nd until September 8th. Now, before I dive into all of the astrological details that you're going to need to navigate through these cosmic stars, I do want to give a quick shout out to the new moon in Virgo. <laughs> that is happening tonight. That is uh, the day that it is that I'm filming. It's Monday here, Magical Mondays. Um, 9.56 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to have this beautiful new moon in the sign of Virgo. So I'm pretty excited about it. Are you, gonna, are you guys going to be using this new moon to manifest a set intention? I am. I'm Virgo, as you guys know. So... Of course, I'm going to jump on this opportunity to manifest and work with these energies. We're going to talk about it all, though. So go ahead, grab some coffee, grab some tea, grab some water, grab some lemonade. That's my drink of choice. And let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, my love. So we are fully ready to dive into the astrological stars. I'm going to go ahead and put the chart on the screen for you so that you can follow along. Keep in mind that I'm going to be merging astrology, my knowledge of astrology, the science, the math, the angles, and the knowledge of astrology, along with the intuition of tarot and how I love to work with the tarot to channel and add on extra dimension to our readings what is that we can again expect for the week ahead so make sure that you are staying tuned for the half the second half portion of this video that's where we're going to be using the tarot to dive even further into what is that we can expect any additional messages etc etc so one thing that i love to do and i'm notorious for doing is making sure that we're taking a few steps back before we uncover more of what is that we can expect exactly for this moment in time and one of the reasons why i love to do this is because for many of well for all of us the energies tend to be brand new right it's something that is not yet consistent it's something that we are preparing for this is wonderful because it helps us to know what to expect but what i've been realizing picking up on analyzing critiquing triple virgo here is that for so many of us it's, it really helps to revisit the past video from the week before. I can't expect all of us to do that because that's a commitment. That's a time commitment. However, it is very helpful. Recapping the energy before we dive into new energy helps us to stay in alignment and helps us to understand, okay, this is the, the vibes and this is why I feel the way that I'm feeling and I forgot that this was happening or this is why this was unfolding. Now, when we are entering into a new week, that's a fresh start, a new beginning for 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 the most part, right? Or for the minimal part. But there's already a lot of energies that have already been lingering that are already have taken center stage and we're looking dead set at them right now at the time of us talking today in this moment. So of course, we're gonna look into what we can expect for this week and the months to come because some of these transits last for the entirety of 2024, which there's not many months left in 2024, if you can believe that, but also into 2025. So there's a ton of information that we're gonna be talking about, but like I said, let's go ahead and take those few steps back. The thing that I think is the loudest energy shift that I'm looking at in the astrological charts is the fact that now Mercury retrograde is finally over. Mercury retrograde always has the worst, worst reputation when it comes to creating conflict, conflict and chaos and communication issues and errors. Me personally, this season, this Mercury retrograde season had me in a full blown headlock. I had to practice patience and forgiveness and letting go like I've never and not like anything bad happened. It wasn't like there were like negative situations that were happening. It was my I just was so tongue tied. And <laughs> even if you go back in last week's video and the week before that, not even a lie to you every like the new moons the transits i was butchering them left and right i called this new moon that we're experiencing right now tonight scorpio new moon i pull the charts i'm looking at it and i just saw scorpio the symbol so 
it just had me in a headlock where I'm constantly like, all right, cool. Like, thank you guys for always being a part of the chat and being part of the conversation. So you already know, like, <laughs> mom brain is real, but also Mercury has had me twisted in a knot. And I'm okay with it, to be honest with you. I'm okay. It's really taught me to uh, ease up, to relax, you know, loosen up. And when we make mistakes, which is inevitable, just reminding ourselves that that too is a part, an important part of the journey. Not that it needs to teach us anything major, but it's kind of nice to be just imperfect, which we all are. But <clears throat> it's that practice of, I'm human too, and we are gonna make some major slip ups. While I'm talking to you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and work on separating the deck a little bit. So if you see me looking down, that's, that's why. The, so yeah, Mercury Retrograde is now officially over. However, we always want to give a grace period to Mercury when it's starting to move direct because it is not strong yet. It's still a little chaotic. It's still jumbled. Think about those times where you decide three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to take a nap. You need one. Your body wants it. And then when you finally wake up, an hour two hours later you're groggy and you think is the the year is 1997 and you're getting ready to go to your first day of school in second grade you know what i mean like you just have no concept of time and your head is in a fog mercury now newly moving direct is giving that energy in transiting through leo this is where it's so important for us to, again, embrace it with humor, with levity, with color, you know what I mean? Where we're just like, sorry about it. You know, like not that you don't care, but you just are able to laugh at the mistakes a little bit more instead of beating yourself up, which is going to be an interesting theme. And we'll talk about Mercury a little further and also the energies of this week a little further with this, this idea of beating ourselves up, especially with the new moon happening, the sign of Virgo, the sun being in Virgo, and the fact that Mercury soon will be entering into the sign, um, <clears throat> Mercury will be entering into the sign of Virgo as well. It just, and then also we have Mars transiting through Gemini. Mars then gonna be transiting to the sign of Cancer. I'm kind of going, getting ahead of myself, but there's so many energies here that can be very sensitive and I don't say triggered, but like irritable and changeable. There's so much here that's changeable. So we want to keep an eye out for our moods and making sure that we're not, when facing conflict or difficulty or things that are stressing us out or agitating us, that we're not taking it out on others and we're not taking it out on ourselves because there is this tendency to see that in the, that I'm seeing within the chart. So moving forward, with Mercury now direct, give yourself and the world and your friends and your family extra space. Ex giving extra space does not mean that you give them or the world space to defile your boundaries. So many of you guys are reinforcing your boundaries, your needs, you're taking extra time for yourself. We've been seeing it within the charts for a long time. This is a common theme that we're still seeing here. Neptune is another planet that is currently retrograde along with four others, Pluto, Uranus, Saturn, Chiron. All of those major planets are currently retrograde right now and they're trying to teach us and re-remind us every single week there's certain reasons, rules, restrictions for things and places and people that we put into your life. Those things were set into motion for a reason. And don't get so comfortable that you allow yourself to slip up and to slip back into past patterns that you have broken. For those of you guys that are struggling with addiction, for those of you guys that have relationship patterns that you find yourself gravitating towards not even so much what you're attracted to but what you feel karmically comes to you this is something that you have to really slow yourself down this is also something when i when i said earlier about like not beating yourself up and not being so hard on yourself to not look at it and be like well what's wrong with me what am I doing that's attracting this? Sometimes it's not so much you. Sometimes it's the the way that your, your astrology chart is positioned, your natal chart. And these are the energies that you will find yourself facing time and time again. This is not something when I talk to my clients all the time, I'm like, 
you know, the, the, one of the questions when they're facing difficult times, they're like, well, how long is this going to take? This is really beating my ass, Jess. And I understand that. These transits can oftentimes take years. And this is not to make you feel defeated. It's actually going to give you permission to relax and to take some of the heat off yourself and just kind of for once in your life, point the finger elsewhere and be like, it's not me, it's you. Like, and then you are pointing at the planets. It's you, bitch. Like, it's you, Uranus. It's you, Saturn. It's you, Neptune. Like, you're the one who's doing this to me. So what we like to do is give this situation grace. It's not going to be forever. Uh, I'll speak from personal experience. In my own personal life, I have a handful of friends who are going through it they have been breaking karmic cycles some of them a little further than others some are lagging a little bit behind but still figuring it out and some of them feel really good about it some of them are challenged and take on that challenge as opportunity others are kind of struggling and still figuring it out others are really feeling beat up and helpless and hopeless and losing their faith but or regaining their faith honestly because the planets are teaching them about themselves from literally cycles that they have been locked into since they were little girls and little boys. I'm not kidding. That's how far back these planets are pulling the threads, the fibers of the quilt of our lives and what has made us not who we are, but made our experiences and how we react to these things kind of reflect what's going on internally. So this is why it's so important for us to face this, the sound of this music, to take it seriously, and to try to be as open as possible. So having said that, that's my little uh, snippet with you guys, taking a few steps back before we look before we look forward, there's many planets right now that are currently retrograde. Just because Mercury is not retrograde anymore doesn't mean that life just kind of opens up. That's when people start getting like false hope and false positivity when they're just kind of hope, like saying to themselves because the rest of the internet is like, yeah, the, you know, the path is going to open up. The road is going to open up. Life is going to get easier. Communication is going to get better. It's just because the planet that rules communication and how we process and analyze information is direct doesn't mean that these major planets, which are creating major emphasis on these major moments and major themes of these major chunks of our lives, are also in cahoots and working cohesively with Mercury's energy direct. It doesn't work that way. These are cycles and seasons that last months and the transits of these planets oftentimes last years. So again, I say this to tell you guys that this is not to defeat you. This is not to frustrate you. This is to prepare you so that you're not again looking at yourself and saying, what am I doing wrong? Why do I attract this? Why do I, you know, it's not so much what it is that you're attracting, it is, however, what you're choosing, and you learn to choose differently when you see what you're choosing, when you're aware of what you're choosing, and the planets are, again, teaching you that there's other options that help you to choose better. So there is that on that. <laughs> that's a lot. Like, that's literally a lot. That's just us <laughs> taking a few steps back before we um, move forward. Now let's move into the, the chunk where we are going to be talking about what we can expect for the week ahead, and then we'll move into the tarot, which is one of my favorite, favorite parts. Always, I love the tarot. You guys know I love the tarot. I've been shuffling tarot before I was studying astrology, and both of them are topics that I am beyond obsessed with. I've always been since I was a wee little one. I wish I knew when I got my first tarot deck. I, I actually remember the moment, but I don't remember how old I was, and I can't even track it back to where I was, well, like not where I was, but how old I would have been because we moved so much. I know I had to have been around, like, it, it was around, but I had to have gotten my first deck around 11 12 or 13 when did you guys get your first tarot deck really really curious about that also there's this question that i get all the time about people saying just is it bad luck to buy my first tarot deck for myself no in my belief it is not bad luck i was gifted my tarot deck 
And that's what got me shuffling. And the first tarot deck that I got was actually the Goddess Tarot. And then after that, I got another deck. I'm so happy, too, that it was the Goddess Tarot that I got first because it's so symbolic. Like, it's just so symbolic. Of course it was. Well, I don't say of course it wasn't the Rider Waite, but it's interesting that it wasn't the Rider Waite, which is the most wildly recognized tarot deck. I even, when I'm teaching in Sacred Circle Tarot School, I always tell them I highly recommend the Rider Waite deck because it's what we all, it's like a, a common language that we all learn to speak from and learn from but it's interesting back to my train of thought my first train of thought that my first deck was the goddess tarot considering where who i am as a person and how my path has unfolded and that's the one that i chose for myself and it's interesting too because the colors are very like blue and i'm not really a blue girl i like greens blues no i like greens purples browns cream colors white black those are my colors so interesting i have lost my train of thought for a little bit here but you guys have to let me know you don't have to but what was your first tarot deck if you don't have a tarot deck and you're interested in tarot why haven't you got one just and that's not to judge but that's a serious question why haven't you got one or do you kind of follow along with that idea of someone has to gift it to you And if that is the case and you don't have a tarot deck and don't use and abuse this, I wonder if we could do like a tarot exchange down in the comments for those of you guys that do think that it's bad luck, but you want a tarot deck. And so, because so many of us in the tarot community, we literally have like 50 plus tarot decks. It's insane how many tarot decks some of us have, but okay, clearly we have lost our train of thought. Let's go ahead and dive into the rest of this week and exactly what that we can expect so we can get to our favorite part the tarot. So what you can expect some energies to look out for is interesting. I'm going to break down each of these individual transits, but you guys know that when I'm pulling the charts, I'm not looking at the individual transits. I look at the chart as a whole. I teach and do the same thing when I'm teaching tarot, that it's important for us to look at the specifics of the card, but also look at the energy that is created in the reading as a whole so uh, we can get a bigger picture. Because sometimes you see the Two of Cups and you're like, oh, it's a relationship. When you look at it and you're like, oh, actually the Two of Cups, which in every single tarot book on the market will tell you, oh, it's about relationships, but it can oftentimes, depending on the situation, it can reveal certain things like a third party type of situation, but that's for Sacred Circle Tarot School. Anyway, um, in this situation, I'm gonna look at the entirety of the chart and I just really get this strong sense, especially for this week, and we'll see what's going going to show up for us in the tarot, but I get this really strong sense for the energy of this week about, again, staying really open, flexible to shifting energies and being pulled in different directions and being distracted and being airheaded, which clearly (laughs) I am the example of that right now. Why? Because there's more planets that are in mutable signs that are changing, that are open, that are so influenced by the energies around that it would be more frustrating and overstimulating to try to be anything other. What does that mean for you? This means that if you have a goal, if you have something that you want to achieve, that you want to happen, that you're trying to set into motion, I don't see it happening this week in the way that we ideally usually expect and wish for things to occur. Part of this, a very small part of this, but a a very important part of this is the fact that the new moon is happening in the sign of Virgo. And any time when we have a new moon, it's not that we are planting seeds. We have the option to plant the seed. It's the hole that we plant the seed in. That's what the new moon represents. Now you can set intention for that and you can tap into your masculine energy or even take some cues and tips from Mars transiting through Gemini, get active and put your thoughts into uh, word and paper and use that to set even further intention. But I do wanna say that for a large vast majority of us, this energy can feel very shifty right it's like think the the image that comes to my mind right now is if it's rush hour in new york and we're all down in the subway and our shoulders are getting kind of pushed around it's not personal it's just there's a lot of energies outside energies that are making us kind of migrate and pivot according to the crowd 
The same thing is happening in the universe right now. Instead of us walking straight to the spot that we feel most comfortable with when the subway is clear while we wait for the next train to come, that would have been the straight, straight forward and narrow. We kind of have to kind of like move a little bit and a shift and adjust as people are walking around with their own agendas, with their own schedules, with their own time constraints, with their own thoughts in their head. Everyone's just kind of in their own little cloud. Everyone's in their own bubble. Now, this can be something that you show up with with an open mind. Remember, we want to stay open and we say, okay, I know what to expect. It's rush hour. I'm not the only one that's going to be down here in the subway. I know what to expect with that. So I'm not going to allow this to frustrate me or make me like set me back. If anything, I'm going to keep my eyes open. I'm going to keep my um, arms and hands clear and I'm going to stay not keep my head on a swivel but maybe this is an opportunity for me to people watch to learn or maybe even meet someone or to listen to a podcast Bahati Life podcast Bahati Life YouTube channel whatever <laughs> shameless self plug whatever it is that's going to allow me to use this time in a way that works for my betterment and isn't going to frustrate me and then you have the other person who has want you know like they have a bag of food and they're having the soda and a hot coffee and they're trying to get to the, the next destination and every time someone hits their shoulder they get frustrated and angry because they can't go in that straight line the moral of the story is and what i'm trying to say is that there's so many energies here that are are kind of asking us to move out of the way or move accordingly and it's not personal it doesn't mean that we're not gonna get to our end destination. It doesn't mean that there's gonna be endless amounts of delays. It doesn't even have to feel like a delay if there is a delay. It just means that it's how we approach this. Instead of trying to think that we're gonna get from A to B in a straight line, there might be some kind of like squiggle moments and half of it might not even be coming from outside energies. It could be from you changing your mind. It could be from you feeling moody and irritable or overstimulated. The plans that it is that you're making have a tendency to shift and change, especially this week. On the third, Mars is going to be squaring off with Neptune. Mars, currently transiting through the sign of Gemini, is a little overactive right now. Now, if you're someone that loves high energy, loves debate, loves to interact and challenge and be curious and non-committal you are going to thrive in this energy regardless of your sun moon or rising it doesn't matter if you're air or earth or water or fire every single one of us is different and it, it really all depends on all of what makes you who you are how you're going to work with this energy if you're going to feel like it's um, exhilarating and brings you to life or if it's going to be something that you're like i need a little extra time to myself to decompress to decompose because i am different right now or the energy is not what i can sustain myself in and thrive in for longer than three days at a time it feels like for many of us we're getting pulled in a lot of different directions that could be parties it could be bills it could be plans it could be expectations for every one of us it's going to be different you want to look at your astrology chart and see what gemini rules that's what you're going to see i also want to say that mars transiting through gemini can also bring up fights conflict and the battling of heads different opinions different perspectives kind of challenging each other that's something to expect here don't be surprised if you see that in your personal life that's something that you're just like it's kind of like um sock and bop sock and boppers is that what it's called when they kind of like punch at each other if you're down for a little you know roughhousing debate then that's that's cool if not i would steer clear i would bring a book i would know when to check out or when to disengage or when to separate or when to say you know i'm good on the rest of this conversation okay speaking of mars mars right if he i was gonna say she it's it's masculine energy is going to be entering the sign of cancer on the fourth and this is when we get a little bit extra sensitive and this is where there's this need this drive this ambition to be like okay i'm ready I've taken all the time that I need with a new moon to set intention, to set a plan, to, to hopefully put it into motion. I've explored all of my options. I'm ready. I want this job. I want to go here. I want to do this. I want to set up the 
nursery <laughs> for those of you guys that don't know i'm pregnant right now so our nursery is set up but we got to kind of like arrange some things i can imagine in my personal life mars transiting through cancer is going to make me want to get <laughs> in the baby's room and start organizing diapers the truth is we are so close we're going off on a tangent again but we're so close to the finish line very very close to maternity leave i was going to leave this as um, an announcement towards the end of the video. The protection oils are all sent sent out, but I'm still going through. I'm gonna say str I don't say struggling, but straggling. Is straggling a word where you like are making progress, but you just feel a little like I like I know myself when I'm operating at full speed. So I've had to really adjust my expectation now pregnant and trying to get my goals done in the way that I normally would because this would have been I have had the shop closed for a minute now a little minute so anyway so I've been, instead of working on the nursery now we're going to be by we me myself and I and the baby are going to be working on custom oils and we're almost to the end those are actually the very final most of the final orders everything else is kind of like little stragglers but so that was an announcement i'll probably say it again at the very end um most of everyone's protection oils are out so i'm really interested in hearing you guys um what you think of those and how you're using them because we need it now more than ever have you been watching the news it's insane it's insane that's actually what made me open up for to to add on to the protection oils before i went on maternity because i'm like i cannot just leave these people out here just not anointed <laughs> with with the oils i just can't like i have it on deck my friends my friends and my personal life were like just before you go can i get this this and this and i'm like if that's how you guys feel and that's how i feel i can only imagine how the rest of the world feels you know so anyway um moving forward uh mars transiting through cancer i'm wondering how you guys are going to be making use at this time also what does cancer rule within your chart very, very curious. Cancer is my actual ascendant. So it's something that I like to contribute to the rest of the world, like sharing that energy. So of course, for me, naturally, because some of you guys, I love you. You guys are like my girlfriends. I'll read in the comment, like, why is she still posting videos? I thought you're supposed to be on maternity leave. Yeah, no, I hear you. You sound like my family, my friends, but you know, Virgo and cancer, like that's my makeup, you know, cancer rising, Virgo moon, Virgo, Virgo Mars and Virgo Sun so it's just just kind of like wired in me I feel good when I'm helping others and we are we do have a lot of help with family and stuff with everything else so um it hasn't been like I'm sacrificing anything I feel very supported and very loved and very at peace right now also some of you guys I'm sorry I'm going off on another tangent but my my YouTube channel my rules right just kidding um some of you guys were asking like hey random but not random because it makes sense Jess, can you share more of your like personal content and your personal life and pregnancy stuff and lifestyle and i'm you've been asking me this for years sorry to the microphone i've been on youtube for like 10 years maybe nine years i don't know and you have been asking since philly times and I'm just very private, always have been, but there's a lot of things that have helped me and also pregnancy and entering to motherhood has taught me a lot. And I'm very, very, where's the microphone? Very honest to the point where it gets me in trouble, kind of. If you're in my personal life and in my personal circle, you know what to expect. Um, but the internet, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, she kind of like, I don't sugarcoat shit. I think you guys know that, but I think that there's a lot, and I'm going off on a tangent, I'm sorry, but I think that there's a lot that, like, people talk about pregnancy, like, the good parts of it and the bad parts, they kind of, not, I don't say bad, but the more challenging parts, it's like they buff it out, like, they, they buff the edges out, and I feel like women should be more informed and more aware and I feel like the conversation, the dialogue should not be like so like giggly. It should be more straightforward. And there are a lot of things that have helped me that were, I don't say controversial, but not what other people are out here doing. You know what I mean? And I'm like, Ugh! as much as like someone in my personal life or even a stranger, because now I'm showing. So people will be like, oh my God, they'll walk up and be like, how far along are you? 
and is it a boy or a girl and then they start sharing their stories good stories of how wonderful their pregnancy was and terrible stories of like how traumatic it was like it's literally you get everything but um well i really am off on a tangent right now uh what was i saying doesn't matter yeah i'm i'm honestly going to consider it i'm really considering it and i've been in who i am as a person outside of my work which is i cook I'm very like homebody. I've been, I'm always cooking. You guys know I cook everything from scratch. I prefer budget friendly meals, but high quality meals. I prefer whole food. I, I love gardening. And now motherhood and parenthood is something that it is that I'm doing and walking into. So I'm more than happy to talk about that. If that's something that you guys would like to hear, whether you see yourself as a mom in the future or parents in the future, or you have a partner who is pregnant or will be I would be totally down to talk to you guys about that I do have Queen Bee Homestead so I'm thinking about maybe putting it on that YouTube channel and on that um, Instagram or my personal but so if that's something that you're interested in by all means or if you're just curious in general then it's great because it has taught me so much so much anyways moving forward uh, back to astrology and then we'll dive back into tarot yeah <laughs> Just be open. <laughs> Long story short, just be open uh, to these pivots, these changes, and the emotions, and curious again to see what cancer rules within your chart. Like, what does the sign cancer, what chunk of your natal chart does it rule? Does it oversee? Does it overlook? That's going to be the area of your life where you're going to see uh, this Mars and energy kind of entering, and where you're going to see more action packed vibes infusing like ex or maybe exuding like you're like a little tea bag just kind of steeping into the cup of your life and you're that hot cup of you're that hot cup of water girl uh yeah we'll we'll keep an eye out for that also shout out to my men here i saw a comment last week of someone being like i guess i'm the only dude 89 percent of those who are watching are female and the rest, like the ten percent or whatever, are male. So you're not alone if you're if you are, if you identify as a male, okay, or if you're born male. Um, so I don't just because I say girl, that's just because I'm hanging with my girls. <laughs> that that's how I see it. Um, whether you're a guy or a girl or whatever, okay. Um, Mercury squaring off with Uranus. We're going to uh, wrap this up a little bit because I will go off and I have clearly gone off on a tangent. But Mercury squaring off with Uranus. Uranus is currently retrograde. This is going to be the 7th and the 8th. Um, we're going to be feeling this all the last portion of this week and leading into next week. So, yeah, keep an eye on your words. Keep an eye on your thoughts. Keep an eye on communication, what people are saying, how they're saying, and how it may or may not provoke you. Also, I do not believe in censorship. I do not believe in holding my tongue. I do not believe in provoking energy either though. So in astrology, to me, even when we see a square or an opposition, it's not a negative thing, it's an opportunity, just like a trine or a sextile within the astrology chart is. So if there's something that you need to say, if there is something that needs to be discussed, whether it's difficult or easy or goofy or silly or you don't have the emotional capacity to handle it, this is the time where these type of transits tend to force that information and that message out, whether you were expecting it or not, especially with Uranus retrograde right now. Information has a way of just kind of falling out of our mouths, like the truth just kind of comes tumbling out, especially especially because Mars scoring off with Neptune all of this week is going to be kind of clouding our judgment and making us foggy and making us like little bumper cars running into the different walls and our emotions kind of steering the ship as Mars is transiting through the sign of Cancer. Okay, we have done most of the astrology. Are we ready to dive into the tarot aspect? I am. For this reason, I'm going to pause the video for just a second. I'm going to switch on my second camera, grab my water, reshuffle the cards and then we're gonna dive right in so just a sec just a tick as my dad says i'll see you in two seconds All right my loves so you should probably see by now that on your camera or on your um tv or on your whatever the video we have the tarot deck up i was born i'm not gonna lie technically 
psychologically disadvantaged. <laughs> I'm going to call it that for now. Basically, what I'm saying is I suck with technology, so I'm still trying to figure out how I want my setup to be. I am working with it, and I appreciate you guys' patience. So as I'm shuffling, you're going to see me kind of looking off to the left because that's where my camera's set up. But um, hopefully it's not too, hopefully you can see everything that is that I'm doing. But this is kind of the new way. And my goal is to, instead of me expecting to just have it all figured out in one week and do a whole lot of trial and error, my plan was to break it down into chunk by chunk one week at a time until I figure out what works best for me. This gives me more time to work on those oils and work on those custom candles and everything else that is that we're doing instead of trying to figure it out all in one day it allows me to kind of break things up that was just my strategy so in the meantime i do ask for you guys to be a little patient with me as i'm figuring it out and we are almost we're almost there i i'm feeling a little positive okay so let's go ahead and dive in the decks that it is that i'm working with i will link them down below I was kind of feeling fall, but then I realized a lot of my fall tarot decks are very spooky. And considering, because I'm a spooky girl, I love a spooky moment. But considering all the things that are going on in the world, I felt like it's best to steer away from the darkness of my fall cards, tarot cards. If you guys have any fall tarot suggestions that you can share with me please let me know down below because i am always looking for an excuse to get a new tarot deck all right let's go ahead and dive right in and see what the energies hold for us this week what are the major themes what do we need to see here for the week ahead again the tarot decks that i'm working with will be linked down below for the most part this card definitely wants to come up i am not mad at the sun card being the first card to show up this is very very positive usually optimistic open openness actually that's that's the energy that i'm getting from this openness especially as we're starting off the week with the new moon in virgo i love even though virgo is considered earth energy obviously and tries to ground itself i see this card with the sun sun card as being like open and honestly when we look at the sun card it connects us to optimism and positivity oftentimes it can also re reveal like truth and i don't say revelations but things that we need to hear and things that we can see in front of our face and the when i think about being open i think about like having an open mind and how a closed off mind can make our energies closed off, how it can make us negative, how it can make us lean more into like our logic and our reasoning and our rationale instead of being open to what the universe has for us. And that's actually one of the things that I wanted to say to you guys. It's funny that the sun card is showing up. With these cards, um, with the planets, and starting off with the sun card showing up, I just wanna say that as I was pulling the charts and getting my notes kind of ready for uh, for us and just kind of like channeling a little bit, one of the things that came up is I wonder if someone here this week feels a little trapped and bear like bear in mind that like when I say trapped, I don't mean like you feel like you're s like exclusively stuck in any one outcome. When I say trapped, I want you guys to literally open up your mind as to what this could mean and what this could be for you. Sometimes we think that things from where we stand, and especially with the sun card, it's, it's considered masculine energy. It's very masculine energy, actually. We think that the way that we see it, the way that we rationalize it, the way that we have logically thought about it, that this is the only outcome, this is the only thing that it can be, this is the way forward. And the truth is, is like, that may not seem like you're trapped, but sometimes we trap ourselves when we lock ourselves into this one way, this one path, and we're only looking for that one way because our reasoning tells us that. When I look at the sun card, I see a juxtaposition between the masculine energy that says, this is what I think can happen, this is what I know what can happen, and the opposite side that says, I am trusting 
the path. I am trusting this experience. I'm allowing every moment to unfold. I'm allowing myself to be teachable. I'm allowing the universe to speak to me. And for this reason, all of these different parts of myself are going to come together and give and give to me what it is that I need to be successful, to be healthy, to be happy, to be healing. If you guys hear any noise in the background, my partner is um, in the house making a little bit of noise. So um, the other thing that I really want to tell you guys is with the sun transiting through the sign of Virgo and with the sun card here, right, it's reminding me of the energies that Virgo brings. Wow, the next card is the devil card reverse. We'll talk about that. It's reminding me of the sun transiting through Virgo, how we try to compartmentalize and make sense of things and like put things in their place, declutter so that the next seasons forward, we have everything that we need. We're fully prepared and that there's no and there's no energies that we're pouring ourselves into that are emptying us. This is so interesting that the devil card is the second card to come up because to me, the word that comes through intuitively is offloading or unloading. And the vision that it is that I get is a, is a metaphor of like when my phone, I use my phone to record oftentimes to do Bahati love notes, to upload messages to you guys, um, text message, emails. I run my business pretty much through my phone more often than not and my, the storage on my phone there's a reason why i'm saying this so stick hang around with me here but the storage on my phone gets so full that the apps that i use like even essential apps that i use kind of offload themselves because the phone it gets so stretched to max capacity that it can't like everything that it is that i intentionally downloaded it will offload it I'm wondering if these, these cards, because this is what's coming through for me to share with you guys, is, is, is there something here that it's necessary for you to offload, for you to get off of your plate, for you to get off of your shoulders? Are there commitments and things that have restricted you or expectations that are restricting you or things that are holding you back, whether it's been a yes that felt good three weeks ago but now feels like a no? What is it here that you can now change and pivot and say, you know what, I originally said yes to this, but now I kind of want to switch up and do different. The other thing that I'm seeing here is funny, very interesting. Sun transiting through Virgo has a tendency to reveal to us very small mental hiccups, anxieties, tension, and discord. We never really think about it, but the opposite of Virgo is Pisces. And Pisces connects us to our subconscious, to our psychology, and our inner fears, our house of undoing. And Virgo will process and analyze that so that we can work on healing ourselves, ideally from where I stand, from a holistic perspective. I keep an eye on if there's little fears or triggers or anxieties or things that are making you scared right now or maybe tripping you up. You may be so focused on trying to be positive and trying to be happy and trying to look for the bet the light at the end of the tunnel that you're stopping yourself from seeing the darkness not that i'm telling you guys and encouraging you to go into the darkness of yourself especially if you've been someone who's been working on breaking karmic tides and shadow self you know doing that um as that work can be very energetically draining but also which can be draining is staying too much in a place where you're just so overly positive and always smiling that you're not really allowing yourself to face to confront to handle to nurture parts of you that may feel a little unsettled restless scared anxious do remember that with the devil card here there's like bonds and commitments that we make this could be external, but it also could be the expe expectation that you put on yourself. Because remember the sun, the sun also oftentimes represents our ego. It's the stories that we tell ourselves. This is who I am. So I'm wondering if someone here may be needing to separate um, from themselves and get into a very vulnerable place where they're looking at, you know, their shadow and why they see themselves as this one way and why they're having a hard time kind of breaking free from that and starting off in a new chapter, a new venture, especially because this is the new moon 
in Virgo. The next card we have here is the Eight of Wands reversed. Reverse is so interesting. This is telling us collectively, slow down, slow down. There is no need to rush. There is no need to put pressure. Just like we're in the subway, uh, in the New York subway in our lives, this is a season in our lives where it's in our best interest to be aware, to try to ground ourselves, and to take the moment in for what it is, which can be tough. Virgo season, even though it's earth sign, that energy can get stuck in the head. Virgo does rule Mercury after all. Mercury connects us to the mind. Remember, our minds are a little foggy and easily clouded or susceptible to changes that are happening try to slow your roll down get back into your body ground yourself take some time to breathe pause and look at every single moment as an opportunity instead of something that you're trying to rush past and move forward i just saw 11 11 on the clock too by the way one last card and then we're going to move on into the oracle if you love bahati well if you love the intimacy of the tarot readings and you want to go a little deeper with that bahati love notes is the membership that i offer where i shuffle and pull for you guys throughout the month i call it like the patreon like bahati life patreon i know you guys most of you guys know what patreon is um but it's not patreon it's just like my version of patreon but i just do those exclusive readings especially because i'm not open to taking on any further clients right now so if you love the tarot and you want a little you want to go a little deeper with that there's that offered for you. I'll leave the link down below as well as the, the coupon code for those of you guys that are newly gonna be subscribing. The next few cards that we have here, we have King of Wands, King of Cups reversed, and we also, what? King of Wands, Queen of Cups reversed, and the High Priestess. This is so interesting because, do you remember how I was telling you about like how our emotions kind of are gonna be pulling us around everywhere with Mars entering the sign of Cancer? This is what this is giving, so I think that but 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 cancer anytime when we're working with water energy we have intuition we have emotion we have sensitivity we have receptivity we have femininity this is where our power is going to come from from us slowing down number one but also giving ourselves the space to feel our feelings to give ourselves the space that is that we need for some of you guys this is going to be emotional space physical space where you're asking for your space so that you can fill your cup up go into your sacred time go into your ritual don't neglect that have you noticed that when you're neglecting your spiritual life everything else time kind of tends to go to shit into shambles that that's that's why don't let that be you um with the high priestess here and the queen of cups this is again this energy here of being open being open to these downloads being open to these shifts being open to these energies being open to your own intuition and making sure that you're prioritizing that not second guessing yourself also king of wands is really interesting because the king of wands represents what we do to take care of ourselves and to take care of others it's our plan it's what works for us individually not factoring anybody else in so if there's foods or things that you're doing or activities because the king of wands is very very active that when you especially with mars now currently transiting through gemini you know what sets you off you know what ir makes you irritable and anxious stop doing that <laughs> right remember that the king of wands is usually connected to the lion and like a male lion and it'll sit and it'll stretch and it'll relax and it does have it doesn't have anything to prove to anyone it knows what it contributes to the pride it to the, the the pride like the pack it doesn't need to be validated oftentimes it does have to fight for what it for what is it believes that it owns but you got to do what you got to do to stay on top of yourself and your game and your life this is going to help you so even though the king of wands is showing up here i see this more as you knowing what works for you and you being uncompromising when it comes to pouring into yourself and making that sacred special time so that you can get those intuitive downloads also i feel like slowing down is going to help you a whole lot a whole lot when it comes to processing and even like being again like stay it's interesting that the first thing that i said at the start of this reading was like stay open with the sun card really stay open this doesn't mean like being positive like everything's gonna work out in the end it will but 
I see this as something is coming through here and it's important for you to slow down so that you're receptive, that you're able to catch it and apply it where it belongs within your life. So you guys are gonna have to keep me posted. So for those of you guys that are a part of the Hottie Love Notes, you are next. I'm gonna be shuffling for you shortly. Everyone else, thank you so much again for being patient with me, with your orders, with readings, with posts. Someone said on um, my Instagram, just where have you been? Girl, <laughs> creating life <laughs> and ba balancing everything, just doing, taking care of everything that it is that I've created and that I care for, including you guys. I love to be consistent. I do have a schedule. I do give myself some time to kind of pivot as necessary and things are changing. I'm working with it. I'm here for it. I've actually learned a lot from it. I hope that you guys are learning a lot from the lessons within your life. I hope that you guys are blessed and thriving and protected as you should be. Um, if you have been looking for the apothecary, the shop to reopen or even Queen Bee Homestead to reopen, it will shortly, but I am gonna take some time to go on maternity leave to spend time with the family and our family that we're creating together. So. Um, thank you guys again for being patient with me. Again, uh, one thing that I probably will not stop doing, and by probably I mean it's like 100%, and I'll keep everyone posted with that, is Bahati Love Notes. Um, because it's just a part of my daily ritual. It's something that I do for me and for you guys where I'm shuffling for our tiny collective there. And then, you know, just I shuffle for myself shortly after I journal on it. It's just such an important time for me throughout the week. I look forward to it all throughout the month. I just can't imagine not doing it. That too is my baby. So, and I care about you guys so much. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Do make sure that you are subscribed to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.